All right. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Oh, good, Lakeisha. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I guess we can start with that. Lakeisha, go ahead and share what, what happened. For those who aren't aware. Okay, so I did exactly what you just said, and I started sending um, messages for people to post messages for me. So instantly I started getting people saying short term. So I'm starting to send those. And when we get off, I'm going to finish doing that because um, I got a little groove going. <laughs> so, but that helped a whole lot. So I've got a lot done um, and I'm really happy. That, that just made my day. So I'm going to keep going after we get off our, well, our Zoom. So thank you. You're welcome. And all I say is just following what we know works. I agree. And being comfortable, being uncomfortable. I agree. I got to work on the uncomfortable part. <laughs> it. Once you realize that the places where you're uncomfortable is where your life changes, you won't want to be comfortable. I agree. I you are you. comfortable, that means that your life is stagnant. Yeah. You're not moving forward. It means you're not changing. You're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're what? You ain't accomplishing nothing. <laughs> you're actually dying. If you're not growing, you're you're dying. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You're just waiting for a day to expire. I totally agree. So I appreciate that. I needed that. You need you at work. You ain't sitting in this whole time. What you doing over there? All right, we got some. Lakeisha, come on in the room. Girl, put that down until after we, we finish talking. Yeah. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. The message ain't going nowhere. Let's have our discussion. Believe me, my inbox is juking too. If I can put it down, so can you. Ooh, I'm rhyming. Um, I'll start. So last week was bomb. Like it was just really bomb. I just feel like it was a lot. Uh, like my fruit was coming. It was really, really coming. Like all last week, um, my biggest prayer was just increase, just like a lot of increase because I finally reached that moment where I believed, I believed in myself for myself. Now I didn't believe in myself because other people believed in me. I believed in myself for myself which I've had moments like that before. Like I've had moments in the business where I'd be like, ooh, okay, I believe in myself this week. And then next week would come and the enemy just be like, nah. And I'd be like, you know what, you are right. Like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. But this is the most that I've believed in myself for myself. And I got really excited about that. And I had to keep remembering to tell myself like, look, tell the enemy he can't, he can't go no further like, than what he think he can get. Like, it was even so deep where I had to remember to block him out of my mind because sometimes I think I'm talking to myself and I psych myself out of stuff and it's the enemy trying to bring stuff to light. So I'm just, my goal this week is just to keep the same energy because now I actually know how that feels to believe in myself for myself instead of just using other, other people's belief in me to try and work my business. So my goal is just to continue to press on that way and it's going to be lit, period. So good. You said, uh, Robin said the enemy versus the inner me. And I'm going to be very honest. It's just the constant flow and stream of filling your mind with good things. Like, what are you telling yourself? Who, who's talking to you? What truths do you believe? This is journaling. This is your morning process. Like if you're not doing your morning process and doing it intentionally and specifically, then you're not getting what you need in order to feel empowered to completely rule your day. You know what I mean? So when a lot of people skip that and they think, 
was not that deep or they just read a little Bible verse, like you ain't doing nothing, boo. Like, thank God for your Bible verse. But that ain't, that's not putting you in a position for what you combat every single day. You know, what we deal with is pretty heavy. And so um, Myra asked, um, getting blocked a lot for follow-up messages. Are you saying blocked by Facebook or blocked by people? People. Mm-hmm. Getting blocked is a, is a badge of honor. It means that you're doing what you're doing and it's always them, not you. you it, it really is. It's a personal thing. It's crazy. I was having a discussion this morning. I almost made a post about it, but I, the, the, I guess the Holy Spirit said, don't do it because that person would read it the wrong way. But um, in all honesty, you, you know, when you check your intentions and you know you're coming from a great place, like you're helping them, you're just doing your job of just consistently following up and um all that because you desire to help them get the products or to start the business or whatever and they feel some type of way that's on them and, and a lot of times it's because what they don't have the money so they're embarrassed to say I don't have the money people just don't communicate like even, that's even with the did I offend you right when you send the did I offend you they're like no like I just wasn't ready like you didn't oh you didn't know you needed to say like you need to respond and say, hey like just in general conversation like I'm not I'm not ready at this time, but thank you for the information. You know, something as simple as that. And so people aren't willing to say that and do that. So that's not on you. It's, you know, it's, it's just a freed up space. When people block me, I'd be like, praise God. Cause I would rather deal with people who want, want my products and want my services and my help than I did, you know, than have these people around that's going to ignore me anyway. So that was your way of communicating that you're not the one for me. Because if you'll block me, that what does that mean? Man, somebody but probably was gonna be complaining about an auto shipment. Somebody was gonna like, I don't, I don't need that negativity in my life. So I see it as a blessing. <laughs> I see it as a blessing. And it might just be the network that you're in right now. And that's just part of building your network. Anybody else got something for that? Uh, I'll go. Um, so yes the block thing it's like block me right like block me or tell me no you know I would rather that than someone ignore me because again like you said Rachel we you are starting to work with people like you want to work with the people that want to work with you and then when you get to the point of you have too many friends and you're trying to delete people it just makes it so much easier to make space because there is so much more space available for those the people that want the service, that people that the people that want to support you. So it's like you look looking at it as a thank you and not as a what did I do. Um, I had a conversation with one of my distributors um, the other day, and a lot of she's a she's a yellow, and see I don't have a lot of yellow in me, so she's a yellow. So every time someone rejects her, she's like, what did I do? I just want to help them, and I'm like, that's not, those are not your people that you're supposed to help you didn't do anything and stop taking you know don't take the block personal just say you know what I did my job now let me find somebody else you know and it it, it almost makes us to continue to be farmers right like we go out there we still have to go find more people we still have to plant more seeds and and for me I know I used to be that way where it's like okay where, where they're blocking me or they're ignoring me it's my messaging or they feel like I'm spamming and it's like, no, like, because they're, and then the next day we had that conversation. The next day she had, she signed three loyal customers from people that she didn't even know. And that's what I told her. I'm like, you're finding your people, right? Like, so it's just that keep going out there, keep farming, keep cultivating that land. And the, the, the fruits will begin to, to show up. So it, like Rachel said, it's like, you take it as, okay, yeah, I'm, I did my job, like next, move on, delete the message out the inbox. So they are not a part of, you know, I'm not seeing them there, but I chuckle. Like when I see it now, I'll chuckle like, oh, okay. Like they blocked me. Cool. Let me just go ahead and delete this message. But um, yeah. Yeah. So I want to hop in. Hey guys. Um, Kind of like what Stephanie was saying about your job. So the past two weeks have been really good. Um, so this past week I sold like seven samples. And then the week before that I sold samples and enrolled some customers, but I think like what you said about your job, 
my job is to ask people like that's, that's the only thing I have to do is ask. And so if people say yes, or people say no, or people block me or whatever, I can just say, my job is to ask. So, you know, oh, I asked 200 people today. Okay. Awesome. Like I asked, so, you know, not for me, like putting pressure on myself, like, oh, I have to enroll this many people a day that stresses me out. And that makes me feel overwhelmed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what if I don't enroll these people today? Like I'm a failure, you know, but I can ask 200 people today, you know, and regardless of whether they say yes or no, if I ask 200 people, then I did my job or, you know, it could be any number, but, um, that's really been helping me. You guys are awesome because the, the people that like block me the most is like the ones that, uh, say, you know, I'll, you know, message you. And I'm just like, no, because people forget. So that's when I decide to message them. And once I do, I just get blocked. But now I understand pretty much to control what I can and not take it personally. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. Are you at 5,000 friends yet? No, ma'am. I am at 1,700 and something. You need to do like partnered up for like a whole week. You, you got to build your network. Doing my very best. <laughs> yeah. So I would do the partnered up host to post, was what I'm saying. So people that you you looking through their page, it's like, oh, it's a pretty decent person. Have them do actually ask them. You might, instead of waiting for them to come to you, maybe go to them and be like, hey, you know, the, the green light message for those networks, those specific networks, and then give them the partnered up host to post um, to get their network. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, to get away from the young ratchets. <laughs> That's good. It helped change my network. Yes, partner that post to post can change your network real quick. Like it's a it's a blessing. It, it's to the point now where you know we we do Freedom Friday and we post and people like it's so repetitive. It's not for me because I have new friends. So <laughs> when I say that, I really I really do have new friends. <laughs> So I'm, it's not repetitive for me. This is going to be somebody's first time seeing my story. They don't know me. You know, they, they haven't seen the stuff. That's, I, I can put the same stuff in my stories over and over again. I just had a girl, a lot of my gummy posts, you know, like I've done and put that gummy post in my story so many doggone times and it's all right. Just had a reply. I'm using the same ones. Okay. The same ones. And people will reply to them. And it's just like, I tell people all the time, it's like a commercial. How many times do you see a commercial before you be like, okay, let me get in the car. I can go and go get that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's the same thing. Like, it's the same thing. Some of y'all know commercials by heart. It's the same thing. <laughs> yes, very, yes. Yes, they do. How do we know everybody got chicken sandwiches? Like Hardy's got it. Hardy's always had a chicken sandwich, but now all of a sudden they talking about a chicken sandwich. It's like, y'all do the most. Like, it's so crazy. You know, it's just, it's marketing. It's smart. Yeah, I turned Fashion Nova off. I don't get nothing from them. I don't, I, I don't get their ads or their texts or their emails. Get you some business. I turned Sheen off too. Y'all get y'all some business too. Elsewhere, not up in this house. Yeah. I had to turn off Children's Place emails too. They do a lot. Target, they all, they just do a lot. And so I turned them off. Turned them all off. <laughs> and believe me, if you're doing a lot, they'll turn you off too. So that it's okay. Like, wait, let people, but I will still go and shop. I don't like Children's Place pants no more. But I like Target. Uh oh, I'm frozen. I'm frozen. I'm back. I'm gonna switch my Wi Fi. Lord. Yep, all of them. You're not frozen on. I mean, like, we can. I can't. Oh, okay. My internet. Yeah. <laughs> Lord help. We call it charter. It's every few months. They just wanna act, don't, don't wanna act right. It's crazy. All of them, y'all, people who market, they market and they market well. They want you to know what they have. Oh, they want to make sure that you don't miss it. 
You know, every once in a while, I used to be obsessed with Bath and Body Works. Um, and every once in a while, I have a burning desire to go in there and get some candles. But I take myself to Aldi's and I'm satisfied. Anyways, so. <laughs> All right, who else? I mean, I, it's the last week of the month, y'all. Like, it's just, it's it's show time. It's I, you know, what? let's talk about this. Let's talk about communication. Let's talk about communication and working together. Let's talk about that. Um, being in business for yourself, but not by yourself. I feel like this is gonna bless somebody today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scale back and see who wants to say something about this because I know this can be an area of opportunity for everybody. Help me, Shania. You're quiet over there. Repeat that question. Since you don't call me out over here on the slick slick. On the slick slick, okay. Uh, <laughs> I said, I wasn't even talking about you, but it's okay. I'm, I'm going to repeat it for you. <laughs> um, so communication and being in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Um, and picking and choosing what you communicate instead of just having the open door of communication. You know what I mean? Like, you know, saying like, I mean, I could, I could make up a whole bunch of different scenarios, but I guess I'm not, unless it's needed. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes, well, communication, yeah. I Sometimes I have a problem with communicating. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just come out and say what I say, but I've been a person all my life that's just been self me, just me. And so it's kind of hard for me to kind of get out of that, but I am becoming, as they say. So I am doing better at uh, telling somebody what I feel and, and, what, I, and what I need. Um, but the fact that this is a business and I try to tell my my uh, downline that uh, it's a business where you can come into the room and just talk about it. So that's why I try to stay in the room as much as possible because I always pick up some little nugget when I'm in there that I may not have done or uh, we think we know, we don't know everything. And sometimes we're doing the things, but sometimes we're not doing the things like we should be doing them, but we think we are. And sometimes when you, when you come in that room and you show up, you get some, you get some more information. So that's what I love about uh, this group. That's what I love about it. And that's why I'm still here. And that's why I keep still pushing. And I haven't given up because y'all always give me something. When I come in that room, I can get something when I'm feeling down or feel like I'm not doing everything that I need to do. I always get something when I come in. So I just love y'all guys. I'll go. I think, um, especially being that I have been in this type of business for a, a, a long time, right? I feel like this team is a team that requires a higher level of accountability um, when you're not, when you're showing up and when you're not showing up. Um, and just me personally, this month has been a crazy month for me. And you know, when you sit back and you just kind of reflect on where you are and where you're trying to go, I know that I've grown because of the self accountability that I have when I realize I'm not showing up and then me coming and saying, like, I don't need, I don't need Rachel to tell me I'm not showing up, right? Like I can go to Rachel and say, look, I haven't, I haven't been showing up this month, but I'm going to get myself together and and I'll be back, right? Like, because I know that I'm not who I was, nor am I working as a dis distributor I decide to have, I would like to have in my organization, right? So it's that, that communicating. So, okay, here, let me just let you know, like, I'm still here. Um, yeah, I'm going through something right now, but I'm still gonna do the basics, you know? And I've never had a team where I was required, not a required, because I mean, you, you in business for yourself, but I felt like I was required, right? Like I felt like I couldn't end the month 
and not address the fact that I know that I'm not doing working to the level that I can, nor should I, that I should be, right? And so, but that's being on this team for months where you realize like, you know, you gotta, you need to have that two-way communication. Like I'm not asking for anything. I'm not, but let me just let you know what's, what's going on. And when you stay in the room enough, you and you do the work you realize like oh i need to i need to ch- i need to check in right like i need to check in i need to i need to report i just just know that this is what's happening the good and the bad right like so you can communicate the good it's like oh yep i just signed the lc oh yep i just signed a dc oh yep i'm only this way this much away from promoting we communicate when it's going good it's like the, are you going to communicate when it's not, you know, or are you going to fall back into the corner? And that's where I felt like, no, you can't fall back into the corner. You can't back up into the shadows. You don't have to step out and address it and confront it, right? Like and confront what's going on and just put it out there and say, listen, this is what's happening and be okay with the feedback that you get. When you say when you say you want something and, and if your enroller is saying but you're not doing the work to get it, you know being okay with that and knowing that you're not showing up but still keeping those lines of communication open, not necessarily making excuses for it, but just saying like okay I know that this is a problem, um, and I'm gonna address it and then ask for the support if you need it. But I'm a, a firm believer only ask if you're gonna if you're gonna take the feedback and you're gonna put action to it right. Don't ask for the feedback and then you're not going to do anything with it. So yeah, that was good for me because I, like I have never ever been on a team where it was like, I felt like if I wasn't showing up, I needed to communicate like not why, but just I, I'm aware, like I know it and I'm going, I'm going to do better. So I definitely agree with everything Steph said. Communication for me, um, I definitely came a long way because even in life, I used to be the person that didn't really like to communicate because I didn't have a thick skin. Like I would be more comfortable just saying stuff, but I wouldn't want to take whatever type of criticism or feedback you would give back to me. And I feel like me learning how to effectively communicate instead of just one way communicate held me accountable in a lot of ways. Because when I when I hear myself say stuff or when I just take the initiative to just communicate about things, especially if I feel some type of way about something, um, it, it just helped me a lot. Even in my prayer life, if I learned to just communicate with God instead of just asking him, like, look, I need this, I need this, I need this, just to just be open and tell him what's going on. It helps hold me accountable to know, OK, I'm not doing this right or maybe I need to hone in a little bit more on this part. So communication for me is very, very big. Um, and it helps me remember things that I need to do throughout the day when, it, when, whenever it comes to this business or just in life, period. I'll jump in really quick. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with Stephanie. Um, I know for me, like communication is really important. And so even when I'm having like an off day, like I'll text Rachel and be like, look, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, like still just let her know, like it's important for your, because we're partners in business. Yes, you're by yourself, but we're still accountable in the big scheme of things. And so just to be mindful of how you affect someone else to either a small or large capacity um, is important for communication. So maybe you're having an off day and they can pray for you, you know, or, you know, they can work with you to help you. So it's really important to know uh, where you're at, whether it's um, high or lows, right? And then also the communication, not just as far as team, but to yourself, like how you talk to yourself is extremely important. I know when Lydia was talking about um, how the enemy will come in and, and um, you know, distract and, and say things and stuff like that. But I think a lot of times we give him too much power because he's not God. He can't be everywhere. He can't be it everybody talking to everybody at the same time so a lot of times the inner me it's us it's what we tell ourselves it's us self-sabotaging um what we know we can do um based on what we've had you know in the in the past you know so it's just us really communicating to ourselves affirming what we know 
um, God has told us about our business and what he's told us about, you know, our visions and our, our dreams and things like that. And so I know for me, like, even though, like, I might look at my chart or look at eSuite and I might see something that um, I don't want or necessarily um, is expected right now. I know what he said to me. I know the vision and the dream that he's given me. So I'm still going to talk in and communicate to myself as if, you know, so it's really important not just to communicate to, you know, like our uplines, downlines, but to also speak life into ourselves and the commu communication that we have with ourselves is important as well. Okay, I'm gonna hop in. Um, yes, loving it all. Um, one thing I just wanted to share too, because with the whole communication, um, specifically going off of what Robin just talked about, like that self talking to yourself, um, you have to, and this is something I learned. I just finished um, uh, winning the war in your mind by Craig Rochelle. So I finished it at the end of the week, and it's such a great book. And it really makes you dive into like, what are you saying to yourself? I'm also listening to an, um, another book, but it's like, what are you saying to yourself? And cause sometimes we, that communication to ourselves is so unconscious where it creates like a rut. It creates a rut. And for us to fix a rut, we have to um, put in new commun communication. So you may say something about yourself and you may not, not even know or pay attention to it, but like you really have to fix it. And to fix it is like reframing what you're saying, reframing your perspective. So um, just really spending more time, and I'm talking about me for like this week because I'm excited, but spending more time in my mind, what am I thinking? What am I saying? What is my subconscious? What's deep in there? And sometimes you got to sit still to really dig in there because the communication you're saying to yourself, you may not want that because what you're saying to yourself is going to get you what you already got. If you want to change what you want to get to where you want, you got to change the communication that you're saying to yourself now for that. So. Cast. Oh, accident. You know what's so crazy? I'm looking at y'all because some of y'all just be looking, Lord. Uh, instead of participating, <laughs> like you, you got, I'm, I'm telling you, like this is the space to participate. And sometimes we are just processing, but sometimes you're processing by yourself is not necessarily a good thing um, because you're the only person talking to you. You know what I mean? And sometimes not, and I'm not, this is a general statement, but sometimes our pride or, because even embarrassment can come in form of pride, right? Not wanting people feeling like you're judged or like people judging what your story looks like or whatever, it stops people from opening up their mouth. But no, honesty is the only person that you're blocking is you. Then what Robin said earlier, you blocking you and your growth blocks other people who are believing in you. And so that's where, this is why I ask God for discernment because I believe in everybody, but I don't want to work with and push people who do not want to be pushed and are not ready for the next level. And so I ask God to make it clear to me, which actions a, a lot of times will help. It, it helps big time. But 
Um, and just choosing to see the good in people, because I, a lot of times, and especially, you know, this is a group of women outside of my husband, husband was listening in, but just understanding of the woman, like understanding yourself and not making excuses for being a woman, being emotional, being hormonal or whatever. Some of y'all may have hopped on here with other stuff going on in your life and leave it at the door when you walk into this room. And then when you go out of the room, you can pick it back up. But while you're here, get what you need to get in order to go where you say you want to go instead of allowing all the things that are heavy burdened on your heart or whatever, like don't let it go from one entity to the to the next. Like you just can't do it. Um, and that's this is why we do what we do, so we can become our best selves because it is always us. It is always us. And I'm telling you, the better you get, the better you will be at checking yourself. And and that's real. Like just being able to, it's it's like an outer an outer body experience. Being able to look at yourself in the mirror, like, okay, wait, is that is that really how I should have responded? Or what's wrong with me that I allow other people to move my emotions like that? Like, what's going on with me? What, why am I so frustrated? What is it that I see in this person or that that person said that was a trigger for me or whatever? Because all of this stuff is just blocking you from being great. And so once you're willing to take the time to, to really jump into that, and, and we're overcome by the blood of the lamb, the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so if that's the case, why are you so silent? When, when do you want to overcome? When do you want to break free from the stuff that is holding you in bondage, in bondage and holding you hostage? When do you say, you know what, that's, this is not for me. I, I don't want to be in this place anymore. I want to overcome. I want to be somebody who breaks free. Like even just something as simple as uh, Lakeisha asking about, like straight up, I just feel uncomfortable sending messages. Do you know how many other people felt uncomfortable sending messages and they just quit instead of just opening their mouth and saying like, what should I do? Because it, everybody was uncomfortable sending messages at one point and there's, it's still at this point in life, if I allow myself to be in that headspace, I can be uncomfortable too. But I, I understand the perspective shift of like, who are you? Like, I am here to help. And if I always gauge the place of wanting to help, then I'm not bothered by sending messages. You know, that, that it's only when I get into a place of desperation or a place of basing my worth off of who responds to me or, and you might be like, that's deep. Yeah, it, it, it can be deep, but a lot of times it does because if you're getting highs when people are responding to you or when people are buying, and I'm not saying that you can't, you don't have, there's nothing wrong with being excited. Like you can be excited when you win, but if that is your, the source of your high, that's a problem. Like that's legit a problem. Like you should not only be high when your business is doing good, you should still be high when your business is going bad. Your business should not dictate whether you're in good spirits or whether you got an attitude or something like that. That's what I'm talking about. Because some of y'all, y'all grew up in households like this and you became that person. When things were good, your parents acted all good. But when things were bad, the house was not good. That should not be the indicator. My, my children should never know whether I've had a good day or bad day in business because I should remain the same regardless. My, they, my business does not dictate whether my household is okay. And it should be the same across the board. And I'm gonna just say this and then I'm gonna let, let y'all speak. I'm gonna open the doors of the church back open. But the, the biggest thing is, <laughs> the biggest thing for me um, when it comes to um, being a part of a growing team, a team that is growing together, because I'm not going to say just kind of like what Stephanie said, it's, it's not normal. It's really not the, the levels of accountability that I, I, I hold this team to are not like other people. They don't care. Um, they really just care about what goes on in East Suite, but I care about the whole person because I understand if the whole person becomes, it sustains, okay? And I want a sustaining business and I want you to have a sustaining business, but how you do anything is how you do everything. And you may think you popping in one area, but, but best believe if you're not popping in that, same, in, in that same way in another area in your life, you're really not popping in that area. It's fabricated. I'm be very honest. You're in a season of doing well, but it won't sustain because you don't have this. It, it's the morals, the principles. Do you know what I'm saying? You just because you do something, it's almost like somebody who's super committed to 
working out and a marriage sucks. How you do one thing is how you do everything. That's unhealthy. To be, to be obsessed with working out and not have a good obsession or balance across your life means that something is lacking. And it's not balance, it's, it's morals and values. Because in all honesty, when it comes to marriage, you're, as much as you're working out takes care of you, your husband or your wife actually comes before the working out. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. And if you find yourself all over the place when it comes to your business, I bet you your whole life is all over the place. It, it probably everything probably last minute trying to figure out what's for dinner or and then it that it can go the other way being super anal I was talking to the leadership today somebody was um <laughs> somebody was sending me a chart and I was like okay this is a lot like it, your green didn't went to a whole nother level <laughs> you obsessing over the stuff like stuff that don't even matter on your chart and you can be distracted it was like, why is this even on your chart? Like, this doesn't even make sense. Like, your focus as a green and being super, super duper analytical. Who on here is a green or has green in their first two colors? Who? It will paralyze you. You will become so obsessed with the details and how to get there that you never move. And you'll start focusing, just making up some stuff. Okay, well, when this person auto ship run, you got that on a on on your chart. Like, girl, is the auto ship set or not? Like, are they commission qualified or not? Like, that don't even matter. Like, that does not matter. You know, focusing on things that don't matter just so you can feel like you're in more control. You're not. You're not in control. Period. How about that? Once you realize that you're not in control. Period. You can release and focus on what you can change, which somebody said earlier. Can you focus on what you can control? That's serenity. You should be living a life of serenity. What can you control? Everything else you need to leave in God's hands and just follow his instructions. Period. And it'll change your whole life. And when you focus on what you can do, you'll be like, for example, with Friday, with Friday, and I had two enrollments on Friday, y'all, and in all honesty, I probably shouldn't have had two enrollments on Friday, but I focused on what I could control in the midst of what was going on in my life. Why? Because it was a habit. It was a muscle. It's muscle memory for me. It's muscle memory for me to, to continue to post. It's mus muscle memory for me that if I have a moment just to scroll through my inbox and send a few follow-up messages, it's just muscle memory for me. And because of the muscle memory, I was still able to win in the midst of craziness. And so are you controlling what you can or are you obsessing over what you can't control? And then are you willing to open up your mouth and ask questions, even when it makes you uncomfortable? Because a lot of times it's like, well, why won't they just tell me what's going on? Ask them. What they wanted me to know, they would add, they would tell me. No, if we're going to be partners in business, like Robin said, if we're going to be partners, because if you're not going to act at this point, then y'all not partners in business. So you might as well release the relationship. That's like being in a, 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 a relationship in general, and you never know what that other person doing. And they never want to communicate it to you. They never want to share with you. You going to be in that relationship long? First of all, some of y'all said you need to say yes because you've been in those type of relationships and <laughs> it may have been too long. But do you, did you, do you want to be in that type of relationship? Let's say that. Do you want to be in that kind of relationship? No. Like, if we're kind of back in the day, if he was going to a party, like, bro, don't let me just see on pictures on social media. Like, tell me going to the party. Like, what if I wanted to pull up? Same. Right? Like, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody like that. I don't. Communicate with me. It's the same thing in business. Like, you ain't been, like, it would be, for example, like, because Stephanie said she, she communicated, but it would be like Stephanie not communicating, but she posted, and I'm just like, are you okay? Like, why do I have to ask you, are you okay? Like, what, what's the problem? Instead of just saying, hey, I, I respect our relationship enough to say, 
hey, this is what's going on. Because it's the same thing that you will want. And we're not saying that people are not living life, you live life. But you are a partner with somebody else. This weekend would have been a hot freaking mess. And I feel like it was for me, but it would have been an even hotter mess if I did not communicate. Take five seconds to say, hey, I can't do nothing. So I need help. Five seconds. And I'm MIA until I'm until I say I'm back. Five seconds. That's respect for my leadership team. Do you get you get what I'm saying? It's and I get it because some people have never done this in their lives. Let's just be real. Y'all, I, I feel you. I feel you. I had to get this muscle. I feel you. I don't answer to nobody, okay? I do what I want to do when I want to do it and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what you're talking about. I've been there, done that. I, this is my business. And if, if I wanted you to know my business, I would share it with you. Whatever. But that is the devil, okay? That is straight up the devil. It is. And I'm sorry for whoever hurt you or whoever didn't come through because you told the wrong person your business. Um we keep feeling diverted back to the situation which was it's so small but it's so it's so big in terms of understanding a relationship so we had <laughs> and I, <laughs> take, take this to the heart with some such kindness miss Brittany. but i had sent the um Brittany. i guess we had a class reunion or something like that this past weekend i wasn't going i really wasn't going so I wasn't, but they didn't communicate it to me. And it was like, what is the capacity of our relationship that you wouldn't even want me to know? And so when I have reached out to the other per person who I talk to all the time, okay, all the time, you don't get to pick and choose for me. You get what I'm saying? This will happen to y'all in relationships in general, in general, like, especially when you really get into your business and you start to shift your focus and shift your circle. People will stop. They'll stop inviting you. Y'all have been doing this for eight years. They will stop inviting you to stuff, but then still want to be your friend, but they pick and choose. That's not real friendship. And Brittany, I'm not saying that we're not real friends. Don't, please don't take that. <laughs> please don't. But, but it's, you don't get to pick and choose for that person. You don't get to pick and choose for your upline. <laughs> Just communicate it, right? I don't get to pick and choose and say, well, I don't want them to know that my mom is having her baby. So I'm not, I'm just going to text one person and say, can you do this? Instead of just telling them in general, because we have that mutual relationship. Yeah. So hopefully somebody, and it's going to take, it'll take time or you just have to be committed to it. I mean, the first time you get into a real committed relationship and you're moving towards a marriage or things like that, the communication changes. You go from being completely independent and not anybody having to answer to anybody to having, if you out too late or you gone too long, having to communicate and say, hey, babe, I, I'll be a little longer getting home. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just doing whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm not saying, y'all, I hope you're, you're hearing this on so many levels. I hope you're hearing that, like, you don't, you're not obligated to anybody, but you should want to communicate because you want to be communicated with. That, I mean, that's the point. If my mama go out of town, y'all thought my mom was out of town the other day. <laughs> And I called my mom and was like, so are you at work? It's like, why weren't you at work yesterday? <laughs> you can go work this place because we go by the library looking for you. <laughs> and that's real because they didn't want me to communicate. If I go out of town, they'd be like, well, excuse me. You know, you know, the road just like, let me know, you know, you know like, and just having that open, like, mom, I care about if you go out of town or not. Like, I care. I want to know where my mom at, you know? And so it's the same thing. Like, we care about, we, we, 
even though this is business, you you grow to love your distributors. You grow to love them. You care about them. You do. When people have babies, when people have deaths, like we we carry your burdens to the throne. Like it's it's real life. And so it's just a gentle communication. If I go out of town, we communicate it. I don't have to communicate to that to y'all. You can see it on my social media because I'm I'm pretty open. But I do communicate it because I understand that I may not be at my fullest capacity that, that I normally am. And so I want to share. I want to share and I want you guys to know so that you can adjust and um, show me grace, you know, show me some grace and you can fill the gap for me. You know, because if I'm out here on vacation with my kids, I may not be as readily available as I am when I'm sitting at home. And I want my business to keep going flawlessly, right? That's the whole reason why we have the team that we have. <laughs> you need the flight details. I know that's right. <laughs> um, that is true. Okay, let's talk about that. So Unique said, when you give out too many no's, folks make assumptions. The answer, it will be no. That's good. So here's the thing. What do you do when your team acts like that? What do you do with a team member who is closed off and won't communicate? This is, this is thermostat versus thermometer right here, y'all. Lydia said, you can unmute. She said, stop pushing and continue to build your team. Yeah, because like, not saying that you're throwing them away because you're not. Like the door is always open. Like you always say like, you're always welcome back. If you want to sit at the table, then you're always welcome back. But one monkey don't stop no show. So if, they, if they're not communicating and they're not showing their effort, then, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and sit you right there on that little, that little seat. And when you're ready, you can hop back in. And so then I'm going to continue to, you know, do what I need to do, build my business and cater to those that are actually putting forth the initiative because I can't put forth the initiative for you. What, what I'm hearing, though, I, I, I agree, you have to continue to move forward, but you cannot make it stop who you are. You can't. And then even that person, um, if they come back in there in the midst, if you're if you're allowing that person back into the midst, you have to be willing to treat them with the respect and the same respect that you would treat any anybody else by like you. <laughs> Y'all yeah, journaling is so important and you have to learn how to release every single day. Every day you have to learn how to release, because if not, you will be held hostage to your feelings. You will feel some type of weight. Like people will get on your nerves. And that is too expensive. I have weight. And I know y'all can, this is an amen. And if you can't say amen, you're lying. I have too much stuff going on in my life for me to have people making me feel some type of way. Like weight. If you don't see somebody's face and then completely just forget what, what you were supposed to do because you feel in some type of way, you be like, and then you you going down a rabbit hole, just be like, what is wrong with this person? This person like she uh, no, 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 no. and it's like, girl, what's on your grocery list? I don't even know no more because she get on my nerve. Like you don't even know, like <laughs> you know, like you completely just taken out by somebody else who don't even don't hold that much value in your life. So how can you continuously give to give and release the giving knowing that your giving doesn't run out? It doesn't. You, you're never going to run out of giving. You, the, the, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. And if you are giving unto him, it's always going to come back. It's crazy, y'all. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all. So I, I am a, a doula, okay, for those who don't know. And I have my first paid hypno mom. And y'all, she was in her birthing time for 80 hours. Okay. I am six months pregnant. 80 hours, 80 hours, 80 hours. Okay. 80, 80 hours. 
Mm-mm-mm. And it was a rabbit hole. It was like, it just needed prayer. It was like one thing after the next, after the next. Yeah, I spent three nights in the hospital. Three, three nights in the hospital on that little couch. It was real. And it wasn't just sleep three nights on a, on a couch. It was getting up at her beck and call because I'm her doula, right? So making sure that she's okay, making sure she's drinking, making sure that she's getting what she needs, making sure they ain't playing her like on so many different levels. This is serving on a high level. When anybody texts me, I text them back. Y'all don't even know, right? So here I am serving on this high level. <laughs> I'm talking to my husband. And I was like, Jesus, be a to these ankles. My ankles were huge, y'all. Like my whole ankles were swollen. But I love that I was able to support her. And it's like, I'm like, one more moment, I'm like, shoot, I might need to charge, you know, like a little, a little more for these purposes. Like Jesus. And then y'all know I made it home. They were so concerned that and I made it home at four o'clock on Sunday, Sunday morning. And then next morning they had sent me this thank you that was above and beyond. They had already paid me. They had sent me a thank you that was above and beyond because of their appreciation. You cannot beat God's giving no matter how you try in the posture of your heart. It's so important. And I had a moment where I was like, oh my God, Saturday is my day. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's my day for enrollments. Y'all opened up Saturday's enrollments. Almost every person that was on the report was personally enrolled to me. Almost every person that had enrolled something on Saturday was personally enrolled to me. You cannot beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. You can't. And so you do what you can and you keep it moving, but you always maintain your heart of posture in the right position. Always. Easily be like, oh my God, I can't do both. I haven't signed any loyals. I missed my leadership meeting and la 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 la. No, I'm just grateful. It's always that posture and heart of gratitude. Always. Are you right? That's right, Kamala. That's exactly right. All right, so what are we going to do? It's eight minutes. What's your commitment to the week? And I'm talking about I am. like communication, whatever. Yep. So I'm committed to definitely getting my 10 hosts to post up um, per day. Um, I am committed to still working my business despite being on vacation, but using my vacation as a tool, almost like a recruitment tool to let people know that this business can go anywhere um, and I can still be on and not feel like I'm tied down to a job. I am committed to getting my hundred dollars um this week and sign I need to get rid of these codes so signing five distributors I am committing to um completing my steps this week I go ahead and lock that thing up um committing to getting another hundred dollars this week and also committing to um really dedicating my time like on movie circle Brittany and Keisha really helped us kind of hone in on different things that we had issues with and um changing my mindset as far as like when it comes to me working this business and working my jobs understanding that right now like Brittany was saying Brittany and Keisha was saying this is the season that I'm in like working my jobs even though I really don't like it so I'm focusing um and committing to really dedicating that time putting business in between my work schedule and just appreciating where I'm at right now Hey y'all. So this week I'm committed to finishing my steps. Okay. Like, um, and, uh, using all my codes. So I did sign a distributor, but she did the boost. So, whew, okay. That's, but I'm committed to doing that. Plus, um, really preparing, um, myself. And what I mean by that is, um, something that strongly has been um, put on me was being like being prepared preparation, like we got to be prepared for what's coming. And I know like there's so much greatness coming. So like really preparing my mind for that. So yes, due to PD, uh, I do my spiritual development and my personal development, but really going deeper 
um, going even further into like the whys and what makes me tick and, and like what motivates me so I can really hone in on that. So really going deeper. Hey y'all, good morning. Um, so Sorry, and closing emerald. But you're going emerald, right? And closing emerald. Sorry, Jeremy. No, you're fine. Yes, closing that emerald. So I'm committed this week to a personally enrolled Ruby, finishing my steps and just getting that promotion done. I'm so excited. My girl is really close. Um, and I'm also committed to higher. Um, levels of communication with my downline, like more accountability on them, turning up the heat and just pushing people. So reaching out to um, different people on my chart and letting them know how close they are, no matter what it looks like, just letting them know how close they are. That's my commitment. Dude, all y'all here, y'all can at least type it in the comments. Y'all ain't committed. Like it's it's all <laughs> what in the world. Help Jesus. Like, nah. <laughs> y'all okay? <laughs> so uh, I thought some people were gonna jump in here. Um, I'm committed to uh getting my five, I'm committed to um uh, my reload, I'm committed to um I had something else. Oh, I'm committed to making sure I go to bed on time because my sleep has been off the chain. So I'm committed to getting some adequate sleep in my bedtime routine. Um, and I'm, I'm committed to celebrating all the wins, big and small. Okay, I'm committed. I definitely get, need to get more sleep. Um, as far as communication, I've got to do a lot better than what I'm doing is communicating whether I'm working or going through something. I'm committed to sending my messages and getting host the posts up and make sure I add to my stories every day. I'm committed to finishing my steps, promoting the Emerald, uh, getting my hundred dollars. I'm committed to my self-development, breaking them chains that's been holding me. Uh, so I'm just, I'm committed to doing the thing and getting where I need to be. Can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys, because my internet is just, it's just not damn right. I've been doing lies and you can't hear me, but I've still been doing my lies. But anyway, I'm committing to work in the business. I am committing to myself, like um, the personal development. I realized that going back to y'all knows, y'all were saying knows in, um, in the business, well, in my life, there has been a lot of no's and just looking at the generation and generation, you kind of get programmed to that. Like, it's just hard to explain. So I'm trying to break that dysfunctional. So I have been doing my journaling. Thank God, I just finally put something in the book like a week ago. Um, I'm reading Badass, You're a Badass. Like, I'm doing a lot for myself to, to help me grow and to break them chains because Really, I'm stopping myself. Ain't nobody stopping me but me. So I'm just committing to do better and communicate. And because I be on here, I be listening, but I don't be speaking. I don't. Every now and then I jump in. But um, for the most part, I just take in what y'all be saying. Like, I need to build up my friends list. That's what I got out of it today. Um, you said something about... um. I need to put up the more partner up posts because my my friends list is only sitting at like 1600 or something. And I've been in the business coming up on a year. So I've been reflecting on that. In two weeks, I'm gonna start my business like it was day one. Like I really have a lot going on in my life. Um, this year we started by walking by faith and not by sight. And that's what's really been keeping me going. I left Florida and I was absolutely homeless. I didn't have no car, nowhere to stay. I got to Virginia and 
<laughs> we are still hotel living it by the grace of God. I've been using what I got. Like them samples have been pushing me through. The folks at the hotel, I've been giving them the It Works energy, the skinny brew, like them samples have saved my life. Like, and I see it, I'm asking God, I'm not where I want to be, but at the same time, my little wins is still wins and I'm still making it. And I did it because of this business. Like, I'm just not pushing myself and it's just so much going on. So basically, I'm, com I'm, I'm committing to, to do better in life, period, plus the business. And I do thank y'all so much for y'all, for y'all motivation. Just y'all lift me. Y'all really do. That's it. It's so good, okay? Because listen, Sample Cash is life. It really is. Sample Cash is life. I'm going for 300, 15 customers, 300. I got three accounts. There's no reason why. I don't host to post that thing out and get all my money, okay? They want to give me all that money. I need to get all of the money. So also working on a reload bonus for my husband. So excited to close that out, super close. Um, and just walking to the finish line, right? <laughs> Not walking, I'm running. Running to the finish line, running, 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 um, and getting it done, like getting it taken care of as new people are rising up making sure that I cover what I can. Um, I don't know about y'all, but we have a lot of, <laughs> clearly, we have a lot of personal goals um, as we transition into a family of six. And so there's a lot of things that I'd like to do without taking from or picking and choosing because I believe that I can have it all. This business has taught me that I can have it all. And so I've decided that I'm going to walk in having it all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to pick and choose. I can literally have it all. And so that's for somebody today who is picking and choosing. And, and God may have you in a season where you do have to pick and choose. But in all honesty, with this business, you can create income to have it all. Um, so I love that, Ashley, talking about the samples because it, as small as what people may believe that to be, it's a big deal. Y'all, on Friday, I sat on the phone with a potential distributor who sold, I mean, in 30 minutes, sold her samples and signed up. 30 minutes, sold her samples and signed up, and she's already signed two customers. So when I tell you that there are people out there who desire a different life, and they are waiting on you to believe in them to do it. You, and she's like, okay, what about the rest of this money? I love when people ask me that question, and I tell them that's yours. She didn't have no money in her account. And just from a simple moment of us being on the phone together, that girl made a 50, 60, $80 profit. And now she went from not having enough money to sign up to now I have increased in my pocket. And so when you're telling people this, when they sign up or when they're inquiring, it's true. Just because nobody has done it doesn't mean that it can't be done. Just because no one has done it does not mean that it can't be done. Okay, just because nobody has done it doesn't mean it can be done. And those of you guys who are watching the Olympics, like watch the Olympics with a transparent eye. What I mean by that is just something as simple as yesterday. We was watching the, the gymnastics in Simone Biles and she was, you know, she I mean, she's legit like she's legit. She's the best that there is. But she continues to challenge herself to be better. She's out here. So I don't know if y'all know this, but they have different skill levels of different, like the vault, they'll have like this skill level um, that they've decided that they're going to present. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like they get to decide what skill level they want to do it. At. She goes to the next level because she's already executed that, that lower skill level. I'm not doing a level four. Like I'm going to push myself to do a level six, even though it's hard. And so, yeah, she was on the, the vault, I think, or whatever. She was on the, I'm not an expert, but she was on, I think she was doing the vault. <laughs> And it was like a six level six for the first time or something like that. And like her feet were a little open and she missed her on her turn and she missed her landing. But she, she literally had to shake it off because she had to go again. The other, like she could not harbor on the fact that she missed that. Because if so, guess what? It's going to matter. She got to have to day She don't have time to worry about what did not go well. 
she has to focus on the next step. So just because one person has told you no, or the person didn't follow through, or you got on the phone and they car declined or whatever, that is not a reason to not, to not move forward to the next loyal customer, to not move forward to the next distributor with boldness. Yes, this, and, I, and speaking it over your life, if you are struggling, say, my next person I talk to is going to have money in the bank. Period. And then before you know it, they'd be like, oh, no, I have a budget. I'm open. I mean, I was going to spend like, I tell you, but they were, I was going to spend like $300 with Herbalife. So what you got? Like, people's products are not cheap. I'm, so you over here offering them $50 and they over here spending $450 with Beachbody. Like, I'm serious. I, I've... I've had the conversation. So just know how you view and value your products, your business, people will do the exact same thing. And people do not know what's going on. And it's about what you believe to be true. What do you believe to be true? Are you a diamond? Are you a double? Are you financially free? Are you an ambassador diamond? If so, you need to move in shape like you are an ambassador diamond. And before you know it, you'll have a business that looks the same as how you move in shape. Hopefully this was helpful and encouraging to somebody today. It's going to help us in communicate. Y'all going to start communicating with y'all mama and y'all need to be on the same page. You be <laughs> teach your mama some things, okay? You communicate with mama and eventually she's going to start communicating back to you, okay? You can help your mama change her life. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to pray. We're going to hop off here. We're going to have a great Monday. And don't forget, tonight, 7 o'clock, we have... Get your, your potentials on, like send it to as many people as you can, like just invite, 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 invite and get them on. And then tomorrow at eight o'clock, we have um, a tips from the top call and y'all do not want to miss it. I'm telling y'all, y'all do not want to miss the tips from the top call. Oh, good. You're so welcome. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just love you. We honor you. We thank you. Oh my God, this squad would be nothing without you. And so we're just grateful for your presence. We're grateful for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. Like we are changing, we are becoming, we are growing and we're committed to doing it. So anybody today under the sound of my voice, God, that may be feeling discouraged or just praying that they leave this call, just feeling uplifted, knowing that they can, because that's what your word says. We can do all things through you because you give us the strength. And so God, today we're walking forth through the end of this month with your strength, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. And we are going to walk in your strength because we the weak ones. So we want your strength to come in and inhabit us and take over and show us exactly what needs to be done. God, I just pray um, abundance over them when it comes to their messages that people start to say yes, that they continue to plow forward regardless of what responses that they're getting and that we give to give. So God, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. See y'all later.